good morning, good morning. I am just getting set up here. I'm running about a minute behind, so bear with me. I am um, just getting set up here today. Um, we're going to do a really fun pattern that there is a lot you can do with. So, let me see here. All right. So, we're going to get started. Um, the pattern that I'm going to use today is called Nice. It's spelled K-N-A-S-E, and it's an official Zentangle pattern. Um, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to demo the basic pattern for you. I am going to share with you a few different variations, and then I'm also going to draw a couple of additional variations for you. So hopefully that will give you the opportunity to really kind of, you know, think about this pattern a little bit and maybe dive in and do some cool stuff with it. So, um, let's see here. If you were here last week, you know I ran into a little bit of technical difficulty when my internet went out. Unfortunately, technology is great until it's not. Um, let's see here. If I go off screen, if somebody can let me know, because unfortunately, um, I don't always know where my hands are. Um, but last week we did um, E-Mingle, and the week before that we did my absolute favorite pattern, which is Flux. Um, and today we're going to do Nice. So I am just looking for... I had done some, um, a couple pre-strung tiles for today because I have a whole bunch of different ideas in my head and I was hoping to be able to do a lot of them, but I'm not sure where I put them. So that's fine. So the first thing I want to show you is this is a fairly, um, standard version of Nice. It is flattened. And it is done with a bolder pen and um, thicker strokes. I've also used it as a fill-in on Halaba. So that's kind of fun. It gives you, you know, um, one way to use it, which is obviously you could use this as a string. You could use it as a fill. Um, and while it's traditionally a little more rounded, um, you can also flatten the pattern out. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to set that one up there. Then this is a different version of Nice. I have, let me slide that right there. All right. So this one is um, done in a round in a spiral. And as you can see, the triangles aren't colored in. And I didn't do so much of the waves as added an additional pattern. We'll come back to these later after I draw the pattern too, so that you can kind of get a little bit more idea of, you know, some of the different directions you can go with. And then let's see. Then this one, I think this one's really fun. This is, I like to show you um, ways to take patterns that maybe are traditionally more, um, grid-like or geometric and to turn them into some type of organic tangle just because sometimes it's nice to kind of think outside the box and to um, take something and go in a less traditional way with it and with this I've just put nice in all these little um, these little tendrils that I have in this little flower and then I have also incorporated it right here into the the button head on the flower so it's just a fun way to kind of play with your pattern a little bit do something a little different um i don't know 
I like to have fun with stuff. Sometimes it, it pushes you to have to think outside the box and go in a different direction than you might normally go. So I am going to plop down my tile here. Um, I am currently waiting on my new shipment of Zentangle tiles because, you know, pandemic. And um, so I am using watercolor squares. I'm still sticking to my traditional size, you know, my three and a half by three and a half. And um, I'm using a nice, a nice watercolor paper for this. So um, if you do not have, you know, traditional tangle tools at home, which would be your 01 micron, your pencil, your tortillon, that's okay. You can work with what you have. Um, especially now when Everything is a little, uh, a little off kilter, and um, you may not be going to the store as much as normal or whatever. So, my number one thing I like to encourage people as you tangle is to just make sure that whatever tools you pick, whichever tools you decide to use, are ones that you enjoy using. Okay. All right. So. Let's get started. So I'm gonna start with my dots. Turning my tile. You can hear my sirens. I have my windows open. It's a gorgeous, gonna be a gorgeous day today. Um, not too hot, not too cold, but I do live downtown, so I do get sirens from time to time. I thought the fresh air was worth it today though. Um, I might give it a minute, though, so that you can hear me. <laughs> All right. Sounds like somebody is in need of a fire truck. All right. Fire trucks don't bother me. I actually grew up across the street from a fire department. So um, it actually kind of felt like home when I moved into an apartment around the corner from fire trucks. So with Nice, right, um, you start out with two lines. They do not have to be perfectly parallel. In fact, a lot of times they're not. They start wider at the bottom, they narrow up in a ribbon. Okay. You could add, um, and maybe we will, you could add a little bit of a border on here if you want to. I like it with a border. Some people do, some people don't. I just think that it adds a nice little touch. All right, and then you're going to start by adding triangles like a zigzag all the way across your ribbon. I always have to start not quite on the edge, otherwise I get confused. Okay, pretty simple so far. We're gonna go in. We're gonna add a little aura, and if I put, placed a border, I like to make it about the same distance. And this is an inside aura. Okay, I like to think of these as the top triangles and the bottom triangles. I haven't had a lot of caffeine today, so my lines aren't terribly straight. And also, I have been up since way too early. All right, so I have, I have those triangles in place. Now I'm gonna go back in and I'm going to leave another little bit of a space and I'm gonna make another triangle, another aura, right? So I'm following along that line. And I am Again, I left about the same distance. Now I'm gonna come back and for time's sake, I'm gonna come in with a fatter pen 
to color these in just you know so that I we don't spend 20 minutes with me coloring in these little triangles okay so I'm just using an 08 here just for some for expedience sake you can um, certainly uh, take your time and fill in I really enjoy taking the time to fill in slowly when I'm tangling um, <clears throat> I find that, you know, coloring things in, watching that that white paper turn to a nice dark jet black is really satisfying. And um, it's not quite as satisfying to do it when I'm using the fatter pen sometimes. I enjoy working with the 01 or, you know, an 02, but because it just takes a little bit of time. You can, as you, when you draw a niece, you can draw this and you can leave these empty. You can add a whole bunch of auras to them. You can color, um, you can color it in if you're working in color in color. Um, you're gonna get a different result depending on what you do with them. That's one of the nice little pieces that you can vary. And I'm going to work in these bottom triangles next. So I'm going to switch back to my 01. And I'm going to start at the top at this little peak. And I'm going to make a little squiggly line. Right? So I'm making, it's like mist if you've used mist. But not quite. Similar. I don't do these as exact auras. I find that if I just use a little shaky wiggly stroke coming down, that I like my results better. You can also, like I did on this one, these were, I, I basically made auras of each one. But I always start in the middle. And I work to one side. And then when I'm done, I will flip it over and do the other side. So I just think of these as like little staticky lines coming down like noise in the picture. All right. And you could be much more precise if you wanted to be. It really, it really depends on the look that you're going for. But in the traditional niece, which is, you know, the standard way we all learn to draw it, and I always like to show the way that it's taught the first time, and then to remind you that just because you learned how to draw it that way doesn't mean you have to draw it that way all the time. And that's kind of the whole purpose behind these little Saturday morning demos. So as you can see, I'm just doing the exact same thing, going in the other direction now. Just come little shaky strokes all the way over to fill in. And that gives a nice little light mid-tone to those, those triangles. Okay. I'm gonna cap my pen. I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna lay down some graphite. I'm going to do graphite on both sides, top and bottom. And I'm going to take my tortillon and I'm going to blend that out a little bit so that you can see it starts to take on more of a 3D effect. Shading's where that magic happens, right? We go from flat, two-dimensional to something that's got a little more pop. So one of the things that I have discovered over time is that especially if you use a wider or fatter pen, um, if you use your tortillon over top of a lot of dark, sometimes you get a shiny look 
or sometimes your paper, your tortillon kind of drags on the paper. So you can always just avoid that as you go, or I tend to just lighten my pressure. Okay, just a little, a little hint there, just something to think about. All right, so I'll set that one off there. So as you can see, like I mentioned on this one, um, I didn't fill these in. I didn't color these ones in. I did do the auras, but then I just did a little bit of, of shading in there, and it looked completely different. And you can see I rounded this one as well, whereas this one I had left flat. Okay, so this one has a ton. This one actually makes me think of um, both zebras and rulers. So um, zebra rulers, I guess. And um, I guess that's how you would measure a zebra. But um, what I liked about this is that it, um, it really demonstrates how just not shading the inside edge here really gives it a completely different look. All right, so next, this one I did pre-string. Um, this is the only one that I can find of the ones I pre-strung. <laughs> so, you know, some mornings I like that. Um, let's see here. I am going to go in here and these, all I did here is I just made a couple of little loops. Okay. So almost like shepherd's hooks. And then I'm going to come from here and I'm going to connect them. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to come back to these lines a little later, but for now, I'm going to come in and I'm going to treat each of these as if it was one of these ribbons. So I'm going to put in my triangles and your triangles are going to vary in size depending on this space you're working in. Sometimes they're gonna be bigger, sometimes they're gonna be smaller. They do not have to stay exactly the same size. You do also do not need to complete a triangle. Like right here, I don't have room to completely go over. I could make it, but it'd be really skinny and that would look out of place compared with the others because these are mostly uniform in size. But with this one, if you look, as I came around, these little ones in the middle are definitely smaller. So you've got a little bit of wiggle room there. Okay, so I have my, my triangles done. I'm gonna go in, I'm going to skip my aura this time. And I'm going to, I'm using my fatter pen again, just again for expedience sake. I'm just going to add in some little triangles. I find it nicest if you just kind of plan on auraing those triangles that are there. You get a nicer little, little um, triangle overall if it matches the one that you're working in. You could use these, um, these always remind me kind of those little pendant flags that they have for like birthday parties and stuff when I'm first working in them. You could always fill in these little pendants, these little, um, triangles, you could fill those in with a different pattern too. So whereas I'm filling these in where they're all solid black right now, you could do stripes or polka dots or flux or anything you wanted. I mean, sky's the limit. There is no wrong with this. You cannot make mistakes in Zentangle, which is good, especially on days you don't have a lot of sleep.
So I'm, like I said, I'm just going in and I'm filling in these little triangles. Coming back and straightening that out because it didn't quite hit where I wanted it to. Facebook lives are, um, I like them. I do. It just feels a little weird sometimes because I feel like I'm talking to myself because I can't really read and draw at the same time. So I don't necessarily see when people are talking to me and I don't necessarily, um, get the, uh, or I don't necessarily have the opportunity to be carrying on a conversation. So that always feels a little weird. Um, okay, I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to just add, this is one of my favorite things to do. Instead of doing like something really complicated in here, sometimes I just like to do a little squiggle and then I add like a little, a little bubble and you could add multiple of these if you wanted to. So I could do something like this. So that's just adding some different interest into these lower triangles. Changes it up a little bit, gives you, you know, some variety. And one of my favorite things is to add variety to just some of my favorite basic tangles. You could, um, you could spend your entire tangling practice collecting patterns or learning new patterns. And while I love to learn new patterns, in fact, I just learned a really cool new one this week. Um, sometimes I don't want to do that. Sometimes I just want to draw and, um, but you don't always want everything to look the same. So by playing with things and learning different ideas and different directions to go in and all of that, you will often um, end up being able to come up with something really cool using just the same patterns you might normally use. All right, so I'm kind of come in now. I'm using my black um, PN. And I'm reinforcing just these little lines that I had done. And I could have left them um, lighter if I wanted to, but I didn't want to. I wanted these to be just a little bolder. So these little hooks. And you could do some kind of pinwheel design with this. You could, you know, you could leave it like that. You, you know, from there you can go in all different kinds of directions. But by changing up the shape, you get a completely different look. You can also go in, and I wanted to show you this, if you add your, um, your graphite along these, I always think of them as seams, you know, where two patterns meet on either side. And then of course, on your edges as well. Again, I'll come in with my tortillon and blending it in, just softening that lightly. just a really fun application of it. All right. So let's see. Hmm. Um, something I always like to talk about 
that um, you can use. I'm not going to demonstrate it because I like to give you, you know, six different ideas, kind of six or seven ideas in the half hour that I usually do this on Saturdays. Um, but something you can, a way you can use almost any pattern is in a border. Um, I think that it's kind of um, almost redundant when you're using a stripe type pattern like this to tell you to use it as a border, but um, it never hurts, right, to just put it out there and say it, because sometimes you don't think about it. Um, but what I am going to do right now is I am going to show you slide these out of the way a little bit is I'm going to show you if I come back in I start with my dots um, I'm gonna do like a rainbowy kind of thing here And I'm going to draw in my some triangles because I want to show you the difference now in what happens when you change up the way you draw your triangles. So if I were to draw them very skinny together, you're going to get a very different look than if you draw them far apart. As you can see here, I'm pretending I'm going off the edge of my page. Well, I'm pretending to continue to draw so that I can go off the page here. And I always just pretend as if I'm actually drawing it. There. All right, so I have a skinny version now I'm going to do a very wide, rounded version. And I have to laugh because I always say I'm give, I want to give you, you know, mm, six or seven ideas. But then I find ways to do this where I'm actually showing you other ways to do things. Um, just because I think that it's important that you can see that the same pattern doesn't have to always look the same. I know that I say that all the time, but that was a whole whole idea behind me wanting to do these. Um, if you haven't read it, um, Sonia Yenser and Chris Letourneau um, wrote a book called Pattern Play that is very much about that, about taking your patterns and um, doing different things with them. So that you don't need to know a million patterns and that you can still make art all the time. Alright, so then let's see. So I did really skinny and I did uh, wide and round. Now maybe I will go with... Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. You know what? I'm just going to go with a basic triangle. So you can see we have three different things going on here. So this is a monotangle and all of this is going to look completely different. So I have to decide where am I going to, is this my top or is this my top? And I think I'm actually going to go this way. So I'm going to add in my auras, my internal auras on these. I'm going to add an internal aura on these as well, and I'm keeping that about the same. And I'm not gonna add one on these. I don't, I don't think, you know what? Never mind. we'll do it, we'll do it this way. We will add that aura that's about the same on all of them. That's not exactly the same because some of these might actually be too skinny. And I'm working with my PN, just because I think sometimes that's easier for you to see than my O1. 
Okay. And now I have to decide how I want to finish these. These, it's going to be really easy. I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a little triangle. And I left much more of a space in between here at this time. And if you notice, I haven't drawn in my dark lines in between these. We could have, but I just think that it's a nice change to not necessarily define that. We will on this spot or on one of these. I maybe the middle one. I haven't decided yet. We'll see how it goes as we go. All right. So let's see. I'm going to come here and I'm going to add more curvy. Um, auras, and then I'm going to fill those in again. Once again, I'm going to use my 08 for some expediency. The nice part is if you do actually um, make these wider ones, you don't get quite as many. So they do fill up places pretty quick, which can be a nice way to fill in some space. I always like to have a unifying feature when I do mono tangles like this, where I'm kind of playing with them and varying the different, different patterns, right? And I could, could have drawn it like this too. Um, and that was the way I have been drawing it, but because I, of the way I'm working, I just find it easier to, to draw up. All right, and then I'm gonna draw these ones in. And I'll fill those in as well. So all of my little triangles are colored in. I have the same size aura which is gonna kind of unify the whole tile. I could have done something like adding little dots and maybe we will do something like that. We'll see in a minute. There we go. Okay, so now we have the bottoms to deal with. What do we want to do with those bottoms? Um, I think we will do some, what do we want to do here? We could do so many things. I think we're just going to do some stripes, some simple little stripes. And it looks a little busy and that's okay. Sometimes tangling looks busy and you can come back in and you can, you know, either add some, di you know, some different elements or some shading and it will really pull everything together. But also if you're doing something and you're not sure whether or not you want to do more, remember that negative space isn't a bad thing either. This would make a really great lion meditation if I really just wanted to take some time and kind of zone out and not think about anything. These little lines um, are great to just make one right after the other, right after the other, right after the other. It's a wonderful way to just kind of clear your mind completely um, and to take as long as you like. Um, I find that you get more evenness if you start in the middle. Um, I didn't worry too much about that. 
on these because I wanted to get this finished for you. Okay, so we have the three here. Um, I'm not going to add in the black line because I don't think I need it. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my shading right here and right here and again right here and I'll start there and I'll soften this and I'll soften this one and then I'll soften this one and that gives a nice like the edge of a spirally kind of shape going on. Okay, and I can come in now and I can add graphite at the top as well. Nice is a fun little pattern that you can do some cool stuff with that you can vary um, without a whole lot of, you know, different effort um, and get some really great looks. So it's one of those patterns. Every time I do a, um, a Facebook Live, I look around and I take a look and see how many ideas and things are out there, um, how many people are using this pattern. And this is one of those patterns that's been around since the, towards the beginning. And there's not, uh, not a lot of it in a lot of artwork. So I encourage you to maybe think about using this one. Maybe give it a shot. Um, I'd love to see what you do. Um, if you, you know, if you want to watch this again, this video will stay up. I will also have, uh, the sheet where I have these ideas on it posted later today. Um, if you are interested in any classes or any workshops or anything, you can always check out my website at whimsybykelly.com. Um, my newsletter is coming out this week with next month's classes, and I would love to see you in any of those. Um, if not, I will see, see you back here next Saturday. Everybody have a great day.